I want to make sure that our guests have all your attention. So, to talk to us about aviation, uh, we have the uh, permanent secretary, Mr. Ossi, who is going to talk to us about transportation and aviation, uh, aviation in uh, Nigeria. Mr. Ossi, and again, as I said, let's try to make it as short as we can. Your Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Minister of Aviation of Nigeria, I stand here this morning to present the aviation infrastructure. Our presentation is in two segments, but because of time constraints, I will not present the Minister's speech, but I request the kind of the kind permission of the excellencies to invite the managing director of the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria, Dr. George Uriesi, to present Nigeria's case for a retropolis project for our four international airports. Dr. George. Good afternoon, sirs. Your Excellencies, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, please permit me to stand on already established protocols. I hope uh, this is the way to go. Oh, yeah. My name is George Uresi. I'm the Managing Director of the Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria. And uh, I'm going to be talking about what we're doing in the sector to upgrade the infrastructure as quickly as I can, and uh, as a result of that, the numerous investment opportunities that now exist in the airport's environment. And I'll put it around a theme, which is uh, how our airports and the federal and state governments are working together to drive a common economic goal for investment and development. But the role of airports is the first topic of very quick discussion. Uh, Many of us don't know that airports play the role of enabling air transport growth in a country by providing critical capacity to meet the demands of today and tomorrow. And when they are well managed, they, they impact significantly on the surrounding economic environment. Uh, they stimulate growth, they stimulate travel, but most importantly, airports can contribute significantly when they are properly managed. And what this means for Nigeria is simple. Air transport is virtually the only reliable means of travel within Africa. It's still the same thing in many African countries, it's the same thing in Nigeria. Less than one in 20 Africans have access to air travel even today. And what that means is it presents a huge opportunity for us. Now, since 1994, a few African countries have set an example following South Africa in investing in their airports. Egypt, Morocco, Tunisia, Ethiopia, Mozambique, and then recently Kenya, Tanzania, Angola, Zambia, Senegal, Ghana, Nigeria. Why are these countries investing in their airports? The lesson is very clear. When, an, when a country begins to invest in its airports, it is beginning to understand the importance of its airports. It's beginning to show it's a leading indicator of change in the economic environment of that country. The trend shows that. South Africa, after modernizing their airports between 1994 and 2005, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 for the World Cup, the impact of South Africa's airport system on the South African economy has been simply amazing. And that's why the Egyptians did the same thing, uh, and they were on a very, very steep rise until the revolution, and I'm sure when the revolution beds down, they will continue back on that steep rise they've been on. And so many other African countries have followed this example. Now, we have a network of 22 government-owned airports. They were built all brand new between the late middle 1970s and the early 1980s. I think at the time, no country in Africa had the kind of airport infrastructure Nigeria had, a, a network of 22 brand new airports. But in the world, you don't go to sleep after building airports. You develop them. And uh, unfortunately, we went to sleep for more than 30 years. 
And so this, this network of brand new airports deteriorated and in many cases became an embarrassment. That's the, that's the position of the airports in the country. We have a, a golden triangle, Lagos, Abuja, and Port Harcourt, which are the key drivers of growth in the network. Growth over the last 12 years has been quite impressive. Uh, five straight years of double-digit growth, which is very uncommon. Even in, in between 2008 and now, when the global economy has either been in recession or tottering on the brink, Nigeria has been experiencing double-digit growth in the air transport industry. That's in interesting, given that we did not develop the infrastructure. We are Africa's most populous nation, 167 plus million people, and that's just the people at home. We don't even know how many there are outside, and there are a lot of people outside, including here in Canada. Explosive underlying economic potential, a population with a high propensity to travel, uh, and, and huge untapped business and tourism potential. So everything points to why we should develop our airports, and yet we had a negative airport legacy, obsolescent airports, basic facilities not at the airports. I, I call it uh, a bad airport experience waiting to happen. But there were many limiting factors. The design was old. It didn't, it didn't think about commercial offerings. It was purely functional. It became outdated. And so in 2012, we did some major rethink. In January 2012, we, we launched a new uh, National Aviation Transformation Roadmap, and two key things it did. It said we we're going to accelerate the development of our airports to play catch-up because we're falling behind, and we're going to introduce the Aerotropolis concept in the development of our airports. Now, very quickly, pictorially, I'll show you what we've been doing since January of 2012. Uh, just to give you an example of one, how serious we are, and two, how very urgent this process is to us. This, this used to be our domestic terminal one, the east wing of it. I kid you not, this was a terminal in 2012. This is how it looks uh, as of March 2013 when we, when we commissioned the new terminal. This was the east wing. Yes, this was a departure terminal uh, in January of 2012. It's almost being commissioned now as phase two. This is the new terminal uh, in March, or in, at about two months ago, and we'll soon be commissioning. This is how you would be traveling through that airport. If you travel through that airport prior to January 2012, this is how you'll travel through it now. Uh, this is uh, the lounge, the new lounge and the new terminal. This is the arrival hall. And it's a very simple structure, but it allows us to offer the basic uh, uh, dignified and respectful airport experience that Nigerians and our visitors would expect passing through an airport. We're making massive changes in the background in Motala Mohammed. These are the ones that we're most proud of. We're extending the both wings on the both sides of the airport by 42 meters. That is just going to give us... If you pass through Motala Mohammed Airport now, whether you're arriving or departing, you have plus minus 10 on both wings immigration counters. And the backup of that, we all know. We're now going to have 20 and 20 on both sides on arrivals and 20 and 20 on both sides on departures, and that's a total of 80. So we're more than quadrupling the capacity. We're bringing in three high-capacity slanted baggage belts. The, the E-wing will be commissioned at the end of uh, May. For the first time since 1979, when that airport was, was, uh, was uh, uh, commissioned, you will have an arrival experience that is not the same as you've ever seen before. Uh, in addition to that, we're working on several other airports in the country. That was Benin Airport in January of 2012. That was Benin Airport when we commissioned it in March of 2013. That was what you would experience if you went through Benin Airport a year ago. That's what you'll experience if you go through it now. Uh, if you, this is Oweri. It looked like a dump in January of 2012. This is Oweri. It's going to be commissioned in the next two weeks. They're just doing the landscaping around the brand new terminal. Uh, this is Enugu, and just a pictorial ch change of how Enugu began to change. We wrap around, and then we modernize. And then this is what the finished product is going to look like by September. This is how the finished product in Calabar is going to look like by November when we, are, when we commission. And we're doing a lot of work in so many other airports around the country. We're going to also have five new terminals for the first time in a long time. Five million capacity in Lagos, two million in Abuja, three million in Port Harcourt, one million each in Kano and Enugu. 
And the Aerotropolis is a key element of our strategy going forward, and this is where the investment opportunities come up. We are in a hurry. This is the first conceptual design of the Lagos Aerotropolis. Uh, because of the time constraint, I cannot, unfortunately, I would love to go through detail of it. I can tell you now already that the interest that we have and the kinds of deals we are putting together have never been put together in that sector before. We are applying success models that have been used elsewhere, and we are doing it the, re the way the rest of the world does it. Uh, I, I see the chairman here is really, really pushing me. I wish I could stop here and talk a little bit about it. But we have a few deals already. This is going to become a very massive construction site in the next few months as hotels and different multi-story car parks and a lot of things start to come up in that sector. This is the Abuja Aerotropolis. This is the second stab at the conceptual design. It's beginning to, to solidify. We, uh, the, the, uh, the federal capital territory and the federal government are joined with the private sector building a new centennial city, a centenary city a few kilometers from the airport. That's going to form part of our aerotropolis. We're working with them because Abuja is a green field. It's not like Lagos that's already built up. We're able to determine exactly how we complement each other and develop a beautiful aerotropolis out of the green field. The same thing in Port Harcourt. Port Harcourt is also a green field. We are busy. The Port Harcourt, Greater Port Harcourt City is developing the new Port Harcourt City just adjacent to the airport. And even uh, two days ago, we were in a full day workshop with the consultants from South Africa and our team to discuss how we will begin to join our concepts to complement each other rather than co com compete so that we we'll make the best out of the aerotropolis. And, but one key thing before I stop is our perishable cargo value chain. The, the perishable cargo business in Africa is a $10 billion business a year. Countries like even Benin and Cote d'Ivoire and, and uh, Cameroon make a lot of money from importing or exporting fruits, fresh fish, vegetables and flowers. All these things, we have the capacity to grow more than anybody else in Africa. That's how the market looks in 2010. 42% of it is flowers. Kenya, Ethiopia, and a few other countries ship all of those. 32% of it is vegetables. I understand that we, we consume less than a quarter of our vegetables in Nigeria because they are perishable. All the cabbages, all the different vegetables, they all rot. If you go to your village, you'll see mangoes, you'll see oranges, all rotting because we can't consume them. And these are things that are needed very badly in the rest of the world. And yet, this is the accumulated earnings for perishable, uh, perishable agricultural produce out of Africa over the last few years in the different countries in dollars. And look at Nigeria, conspicuously zero. And yet, we have the capacity to produce all of this more than anybody else. What are we doing about it? We've designated six airports as regional food basket airports. We're equipping them with modern perishable cargo facilities. We're working with the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and the state governments in those food baskets to provide a supply chain that will allow the facilities we're investing in, which will become ready in 2014. They are already being manufactured outside the country. They will be brought in and coupled together and will have the capacity and the infrastructure to e evacuate on a nightly basis fresh produce out of Nigeria. Just imagine the impact of that in terms of investment opportunities, in terms of employment generation, rural poverty reduction, and all the other benefits that will accrue out of allowing our farmers in the rural areas be able to take their produce and put it in the international market on a daily basis. The access to forex, the, the, the increase in the quality of lives of those people. Uh, our view, we're finishing now. Between 20, uh, by 2015 and beyond is a network of international standard airports, a thriving aerotropoli at four of our airports. We're participating in the lucrative perishable uh, air freight market. The industry in Nigeria is taking its rightful place on the continent. We're inviting all of you to come in with all the opportunities. I'm, I'm going to be happy to talk to a lot of people who want to talk to me right now going forward. Uh, the, the Oxford Contribution of Air Transport to Sustainable Development document in 2003 said, perhaps the major contribution that can be made to economic development in Africa is to enable the African air transport industry. I don't think it could have been better said. We have absolutely no doubt in our minds or any hesitation in dreaming big because we believe in ourselves and in our country. We are beginning to demonstrate that we, what we are doing what we said we would do. Uh, according to Warren Buffett, he says it's not necessary to do extraordinary things to get extraordinary results. I say you just need to be determined, committed, and disciplined. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.